So without wasting any time, let's let's talk about the function of the phloem. You see, the phloem itself, it is a vascular tissue, so it transports substances as well. The function of the phloem is to transport sucrose and amino acids. Just a little bit of reminder for you, chapter 2, sucrose is a disaccharide, it is a non-reducing sugar, and it's made up of alpha-glucose and fructose linked together by glycosidic bonds. Just a little bit of revision, all right? And the sucrose and amino acids are transported from something called a source to a sink. So you might be thinking, looking at the plant here, I'm showing you leaf, stem, and root, and some students will go, wait, what is a source? Is it a particular part of the plant? Is it a special part of the plant? Well, a source is just a part of the plant that provides the sucrose and amino acids. And a sink is just the part of the plant that receives the sucrose and amino acids. So most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the source is usually the part of the plant that can produce the sucrose and amino acids through photosynthesis. And obviously that part of the plant has to be in the leaf. And particularly, it will be the mesophyll cells, uh, spongy mesophyll cells or palisade mesophyll cells. These cells are referred to as the source because they are able to synthesize the sucrose and amino acids. Therefore, they are able to provide it to other parts of the plant. That's what the source is. Now, the sink is a part of the plant that usually cannot synthesize or make the sucrose and amino acids, so they have to receive it from somewhere else. And for example, a particular sink is the root cortex cell because the root cortex cells do not have chloroplasts right because why would they need chloroplasts they are underneath the soil they will not be able to receive sunlight so in that case um, the root cortex is the sink so the transport of sucrose and amino acids as you can see those yellow colored dots for example let's just imagine them to be sucrose and amino acids uh, they will be transported from the leaf cell from the palisade mesophyll cell to the root cortex cell via the phloem tissue. So that's what the phloem does. The phloem makes sure that the sucrose and amino acids from the leaf go all the way to the roots where they are required. So just taking out the mesophyll cell and the root cortex cell, source and sink respectively, Remember, they are connected to each other through the phloem. And I told you before in the previous video, the phloem is actually made out of two types of cells, which are the companion cells and also the phloem sieve tube. So the question here is, how exactly do the sucrose and amino acids move from the mesophyll cells all the way to the uh, root cortex cell? For the purpose of this video, I'm only going to focus on sucrose. I know that the phloem transports amino acids, but how, uh, if the question, most of the time the question will just focus on sucrose, right? But if you need to explain the transport of amino acids, just replace the word sucrose with amino acids, and it's very much the same. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to focus on sucrose only, all right? So the first thing that actually needs to happen is the mesophyll cell synthesizes the sucrose, which I've represented in the pink triangles. And what happens first is a process known as active loading of sucrose. Active loading just basically means the sucrose is transported from the source into the phloem sieve tube element, as you can see over there, represented by the red arrow. Now, you might be thinking as a student, wait, isn't that just normal diffusion? Doesn't it just move from a higher to lower concentration? Not exactly. Active loading is a rather complex process and it deserves its own video. But for now, all you just have to know is active loading of sucrose happens where the sucrose is transported into the phloem sieve tube element from the source. Simple stuff first. Now, what happens is, remember I told you that the phloem sieve tube has some cytoplasm, right? Uh, so, 
because the sucrose is now dissolved inside the phloem sieve tube cytoplasm, it lowers the water potential in the sieve tube element, which I've highlighted over there. You might be thinking, why does the water potential become lower? Well, remember, when we studied osmosis in chapter 3, the higher the solute concentration in a particular area, the lower its water potential. That's just the relationship it has. And another very important thing to also understand, don't need to memorize this, is the flow sieve tube element is not just next to a companion cell. There will be other parenchyma cells that I'm just drawing over there. It's just surrounding the phloem tissue as well. So why is this important is because when the phloem sieve tube element has a lower water potential, the surrounding cells will have a higher water potential by comparison. So, what's the big deal if it has a higher water potential in the surrounding cells? Well, obviously, water from the surrounding cells will then rush into the phloem sieve tube through a process known as osmosis. So, why is this a big deal when water rushes in through osmosis? In that case, look at what happens to the, the phloem sieve tube when the water rushes in. The volume of the cell increases obviously the volume of the cytoplasm increases and look at the sieve tube element the sieve tube element starts to swell up due to the excess water rushing in and because it swells up obviously the pressure inside the sieve tube element will increase and in that case by comparison the phloem sieve tube element at the bottom has a lower pressure because Earlier, they both have the same pressure, but because water rushed into the sieve tube element at the top, the sieve tube element at the top will now have a higher pressure, and by comparison, the one at the bottom will have a lower pressure. And this creates a pressure gradient, which you kind of have seen in the xylem vessels as well. Pressure gradient just means that one area has a higher pressure, one area has a lower pressure. It's just a difference in pressure between two areas. And therefore, when there's a pressure difference, a process known as mass flow occurs. Look at the cytoplasm, look at the water. The water starts draining downwards uh, from a higher pressure to lower pressure. And because the sucrose is dissolved together with the water wherever the water goes the sucrose follows this is known as mass flow where the water and solutes move down the pressure gradient and once it reaches the bottom look now the sucrose is at the bottom of the phloem and it is near the sink and at this point the sucrose is unloaded into the sink this is how substances are transported in the phloem First process that happens is active loading of sucrose into the phloem sieve tube. And the second thing is it lowers the water potential of the phloem sieve tube. Thus, water rushes in by osmosis. At the, the phloem sieve tube will have a higher pressure and this creates a pressure gradient where there's a difference in pressure. And the process known as mass flow occurs where the water and the dissolved substances will move uh, down the pressure gradient and the sucrose will reach the bottom, the destination, and it's unloaded into the sink. Uh, for example, the sink here is the root cortex, but it can be also any other parts of the plant. A very important thing that I want you to understand is a lot of times students assume that the source is always at the top and the sink is always at the bottom, as I'm showing you over here. But not necessarily though. For example, if I were to draw out a fruit here and the fruit requires sugar, the sucrose will have to be transported from the leaf towards the fruit, which is above, right? So in this case, transportation in the phloem is not just always moving from top to bottom. In some situations, it might also move from bottom to top, as I'm showing you in this diagram. The source is located at the bottom and the sink, which is the fruit cell, is located at the top in this situation. So students might go, oh my God, is this movement going to be different? Not exactly. The same principles actually will apply. What I mean by that is, number one, the mesophyll cells will still synthesize the sucrose as usual, and the sucrose is actively loaded into the phloem sieve tube. Same process happens, by the way, 
and once active loading of uh, sucrose happens in the phloem sieve tube, it, there will be more solutes, which are the sucrose, inside the phloem sieve tube element. So the water potential of that particular phloem sieve tube element, which I've highlighted, it will decrease. The water potential will decrease. And because the water potential decreases, um, water from the surrounding cells of the sieve tube element will rush into the cell by osmosis and when water rushes into the cell by osmosis that particular sieve tube element swells up and when it swells up it's so full of water that it has a very high pressure and it creates a pressure gradient because now the high pressure is at the sieve tube element at the bottom and the low pressure by comparison is at the sieve tube element at the top so there is a pressure gradient, which is the difference in pressure, and thus mass flow occurs where the water and the dissolved substances just move along the pressure uh, from high to low pressure. And in this case, it moves upwards because that's what the pressure gradient was like. So mass flow of sucrose along the flow of sieve tube occur, and they reach the top, which are the fruit cells. And in this case, active unloading of sucrose takes place. For this particular diagram, the source is at the bottom and the sink is at the top. But uh, for this particular diagram, the source is at the top, the sink is at the bottom. That's all we just have to understand. So as students, you just have to know that uh, movement of sucrose and amino acids in the phloem uh, can occur in both directions, either top to bottom or bottom to top, not at the same time, obviously. Uh, and um, you just also have to be familiar with the uh, particular process, active loading, lowering the water potential of the phloem sieve tube, water rushing in by osmosis, uh, creating a pressure gradient, and the mass flow. These are the key words that you'll have to talk about in the exam. Do not worry so much about active loading because we will be doing that in the final video for this chapter.